Okay, I'm not sure how much memory, or sorry, how much battery I've got left on the camera, so we're just going to have to be pretty quick about this one this week. What we're going to cover, oh, well, what we've covered so far in part one and part two, so part one was the circadian rhythm and like the kind of pattern, the sleep patterns and the sleep pressure, kind of chemical or molecule or whatever you want to call it. And then the second one was the different stages of sleep and how those have different effects. What this part three is going to be about is about the benefits of sleep, in, in at least in one capacity. I didn't want to do list all the benefits in one go. I thought we'd go, you know, like a benefit, then, you know, a negative of being sleep deprived and then a positive of sleep and then, you know, back and forth and then maybe throw a random like general knowledge one about the sl about sleep, uh, you know, in there every once in a while. But let's get started. So what I want to talk about today is how sleep is incredibly important like when it comes to learning and having good quality sleep uh, greatly benefits your ability to retain information and also to learn new information which if you kind of remember back to the previous video when we talked about how in NREM sleep you're going from you know as a process of that it's taking your short-term memory bank and then you know kind of transferring that information and those memories and experiences into your kind of long-term uh, neocortex, which is kind of like your long-term uh, memory storage or whatever you want to call it for your brain. The way they kind of tested this and proved this was they did an, uh, a number of tests, and this is in relation to uh, learning new things and whether, uh, and, and whether sleep has an effect on that. So they got two groups. One learned, like each had to learn a group, the, the same group of a hundred names and faces. So it was kind of like a, um, a who's who, like they, they learnt the, the name and face of each one, but both groups got the same list of people that they had to learn, right? Then what happened was one group got to have a 90 minute sleep and then they woke up and then about two hours, two to three hours later at let's say five o'clock, uh, they, they got tested and had to learn a, a new group, a, a new group of hundred names and faces. So not the one from before, but a completely new one. While the other group, the one, uh, the group over here, they had to stay up the whole time. So they got tested on the first 100, you know, name and faces, had to learn that. And then when they came to, then at five o'clock, you know, at the same time as the other group, uh, they had to learn those new 100 names and faces. But they, unlike that group, had no sleep at all. Like, well, they had no nap. They just essentially were, you know, awake the whole time. And what they found was that the group that had the nap was significantly better by, I think it was like close to like 20% when it came to learning the new names and faces, as opposed to the group that had to stay up the whole time. What that kind of shows to us is that, and, th and this is what he kind of says in the, in, in the book, is that, you know, before you need to learn something, you want to like sleep or like you want to be ha you want to be well rested before you want to learn something new because what it allows your brain to do is you know when we covered last week was if your short term memory has been moved over to your long term you now have space to learn new things whereas if you know you aren't given if your brain isn't given that opportunity what will end up happening is you'll learn things poorly and also you'll forget some of the things you previously learned because as new information, new experience, and new knowledge comes in, it overwrites some of the stuff in that short-term memory bank that you have. And, you know, you kind of lose it. So that's one aspect where he talks about you want to sleep before you want to learn, but the other component is you also want to sleep after you've learned something. And the experiment that they did, and, you know, other people have done these experiments as well. It's not, it's not just him, but, like, so there is a body of research behind it was they got two groups again. One group was going to do a 90 minute nap like last time. One group was going to have to stay awake the whole time. But the way they shifted the experiment was they had to, the, each group had to learn a, like, let's say, um, you know, like 50 words or something and had to learn the meaning like as, associated with it, like what, what it is like. Um, and then, you know, they, they, they learned them in the morning and then let's say at five o'clock or whatever in the afternoon, they had to, you know, recall as many of the words as they could and, and the meaning of those words. What they found is a similar kind of instance as before, which, you know, is pretty unsurprising if, you know, we're talking about why the benefits of sleep are so important, 
is that the group that had the nap were once again significantly better than the group that didn't have the nap when it came to recalling what the words were, like what the, the words were in the morning and what their meanings were. And to go even a bit further than that, the, you know, scientists or the, you know, the researchers wanted to look at does the brain, when, it, when it's moving the information from the short-term memory banks to your kind of like more like long-term uh, storage in your brain, does it discriminate or does it just send everything? Does it just send all the information that's there? Or is there like a filter which decides, okay, this bit of information is important, this one can be forgotten because it's not needed, and so on and so forth. Like, does it do that? The way they went about it was pretty similar to that previous experiment, the one I talked about, the words. The difference was, so out of the 50 words they had to learn, now it was changed that 25 of the words would be colored green when, when they were shown to the, um, the participant of the study, and the other 25 would be in red. And what green meant was that you had to remember that word and the red meant that you didn't have to, you weren't meant to remember that word. You were meant to forget it. And what they ended up uh, finding, and they, and they did the same thing, where one group got the nap and then, you know, they learned it in the morning and then in the afternoon they tested them again. What they found was not only was the group, uh, the group that had the nap, not only were they better at recalling the total number of words, like, you know, of the green, uh, of the words they needed to, they also were much better at forgetting the words they didn't need to remember. They were much better. So they, in other words, they remembered a lot more of the green words that they were supposed to and remembered a lot and purposely, like almost purposely forgot a lot of the red words they weren't meant to. Meanwhile, the other group, the ones that stayed up the whole time, it was pretty much even. Like they, they remembered the green words just as much as they remembered the red words which kind of just showed that they, their brain hadn't done that filtering process where it's, it was just the brain was just relying on what was in their short-term memory and it was just you know drawing upon whatever it could, it, it could find when it was being tested, not remembering that there were certain ones that needed to be filtered out and certain ones that were you know, prioritized. And if you've ever had that kind of experience in your life where someone's you know, taught you a bit of information or you know, I can at least attest to this when it comes to university, when a, a professor or whatever says, hey, look, I'm going to teach you this, you know, this module or this thing or the, in the, this bit of um, information, but it's not t- going to be tested in the assignments, man, I, am ne- I never remember any of that information because it's almost like my brain goes, do I actually need this to pass the course? No, I don't need it. Okay, sweet, cool. Not going to remember. Like I, I might remember it for the day. And then when I wake up the next day, I'm just like, yep, don't remember. And that's probably because the brain is doing that filtering process where it's looking at that information and going, wait a second, no, we don't need this for, you know, kind of like the environment we find ourselves in and, and for what's important to us. So yeah, now this can be discounted. This can be done away with. Now you might be thinking that, you know, the difference between the two groups, the ones that got the nap and the one that didn't was maybe, maybe the group that was, uh, they got the nap, maybe they were, you know, had better reaction speeds or better focus or concentration. Well, the scientists accounted for that and there was no difference, sorry, there was, yeah, there was no difference between the two groups when it came to like concentration and focus and reaction speeds, completely the same. So it wasn't any of those factors that were determining it. It just seemed to be sheerly um, based off the, the sleep that they got. And, and the processes that kind of, you know, are involved when you do, you do go through a sleep cycle because they, you know, timed it specifically to be 90 minutes because you, at that point you'd go through a whole sleep cycle of both um, NREM and REM sleep. And like, and like we said, the, ma- the main benefit of that was to mainly, you know, store the information away. Now, look, I'm probably going to leave this here just because, like I said, I'm not sure how much like the camera's got left. But uh, next week, what we'll do is we'll cover, you know, some of the issues with sleep deprivation. And you would be surprised how even just, you know, losing an hour or two or even just an hour and a bit, you know, over a week can actually, you know, get to the point where you become actually sleep deprived. And I'll look, I'll go into more detail next week, but it's kind of shocking. Like you, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't believe it until unless there were the scientific studies to back it up and to you know actually compare compare the pairs but um yeah it's it's utterly terrifying but we'll leave it here for now thanks so much for watching and if you could follow and subscribe and whatever and like that'd be great 
and I'll see you next week.